was mommy odd and he was making himself sorry very very much that Max Roy when he heard that he after he woke up we learned that he woke up after he ate from the apple and he goes off goes off yeah goes off. Goes very off. very uh, and American and then to eat from an apple and to doze off to take a nap doze yes. sleeping beauty all right disease Sleeping All right. But then after he understood that he done a mistake, that he sinned, so he became very, very sad. Lichora, it seems, Atzar shel Hasheni Lamalchut, that the sorrow of that viceroy, Muvan Meod, we can understand him, that he became sad. Puavar Nedudim, he was traveling a lot, Utlaot, Rabot, and a lot of troubles. Bechipusav Achar Bata Melech, while he was uh, searching. searching the princess, the daughter of the king. Searching for, for searching for, for searching for the daughter of the king. Ve'ad she sof sof matzah taba mivtzar, and until in the end he found her in that castle. castle. And then after he found her, after a lot of years, ulo yachol hayal leotziota. He couldn't take her out. Until he's going to find a place, and he's going to sit in that place for one whole year, and he's going to miss her, and he's going to pray about her, and he's going to suffer for one more year. And after all of that year went, finished, and now, and and he was on his way to take her out. He was so close to his goal. He failed in something like that. Something like that, it means something so easy. He had the desire to eat something, to eat an apple. Because of that, because he wanted to eat, you failed. Something so important was on his, on, on his head, on his back, and he's supposed to make it. And he failed because such a nonsense, something so small, ruined all of it, all of it. And now he's asleep for years because of that. It's so disappoint, disappointing. But now, and he now also doesn't know where she is and how you're going to get there. And it's again, all of the thing, all of the thing from the beginning again. But the Rav Shalom is writing, explaining, the truth is, absolute truth, absolute truth is, that this sorrow, it's a big, big um, defect in the faith of the person. Mishum, because, that the device Roy, he should understand, he was supposed to understand that if he fails, perusho it means shehu pashut adain that he is just still a nora ui leotzi et bat amelech. He's not um, he's not ready enough. He's not ready enough yet, deserved enough yet to take that princess out. So actually to take her out now, it's not his mitzvah. Everyone that he wants to achieve something, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't let you do it, you need to understand those are not your mitzvot now. You need to pray on that. You need to work on yourself. And this is your, those are your mitzvot. If to work on, the, on that, to achieve something in the future, this is your, your place now. So you... So you need to be happy with that. This is how I'm serving Hashem. If you want to wake up early, and it's very hard for you to wake up at, let's say a person wants to wake up Chatzot. You understand? This is the mitzvah. So, first of all, he needs to go to sleep early, not at 10 p.m. He needs to go to sleep at 8, at 7, something like that. Then maybe you're going to wake up at midnight. But if you're going to sleep at 10, at 11, you can't wake up at 12 or at 1 something like that, it, it's going to be hard. So, first of all, you need to work on that. But it's hard. You have kids, you have wife, you have, I don't know what things you need to do. So what you're going to do? You 
need to work on that. So now, even though that you're not waking up midnight, but you're planning to, and you are working on that to go sleep early, you start talking about that with your wife, you start, of course, before davening on that and, and asking for, for Hashem in Baraf to have that privilege to wake up midnight and things like that, this is your job now. This is your chatzot also. This is how you're going to reach chatzot. You want to reach chatzot without that. So in the beginning, instead of davening at minyan in 7 in the morning, you're davening at Netzach Hama, at 5.30, at 6. It's also progress. You also got closer to your goal. And you need to be happy with that next, because you know that you're going to achieve chatzot. Even if you're not going to achieve chatzot, you need to be happy with everything that you're doing. But for us, for a person that has got a goal, someone wants to achieve something, you want to be a tzaddik, you don't want to steal anymore, all right, you're working on it, you need to understand that this is your job. You can't succeed now. You can't wake up every day to an etzachama, every day. You can't wake up to do chatzot. You can't stop yourself from stealing a lot of things. It's hard. People have yetzerara. People have worries, things that they need to, to take care of, people that depend on them, things that they need to take care of first. So those things, they are must. It's th there are things that you have to take care of before you reaching the new level. So when you're in between, when you're, while you're working, you need to be happy. You're not allowed to be sorry about that, that you're not waking up chatzot now, because you're trying to. You're working on that. So that Viceroy, because he couldn't take her out, he was sad. He fell to sadness. It is a mistake. You need to be happy because you weren't worthy yet. You weren't ready. You didn't have, you weren't capable of going and taking, taking her. You would spoil more. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu now put you to sleep. Let you wait. You're going to have more time to look for her. You're going to work on your emunah. You're going to pray more about oh. things. And then when you're going to meet her again, in the next time that you're going to have the, the option, you're going to be capable of taking her. You're going to have the powers to do that. But she also showed sorrow when she went by and saw him sleeping. She's the Shekhinah Kedosha. She, everything she's that she's, that she's the faith. All of her, yes, all of her sorrow is a result of the, of, of, She's feeling sorry for Am Israel, for Nishmot Israel. She is sorry for him that he is not capable of taking her. She's crying on him. This is why she told him, she revealed to him that she, in the next time you're going to see. For you to cry on somebody else is, is good. It's, it's, it can be positive. No, it's you not allowed to be said. You know I'm saying, relatively speaking, to cry on yourself is usually purposeless. So, why wasn't he worthy to take that princess out from the castle? Because he didn't pray enough prayers. And he still is not holding that high level of faith that he can take the princess out from the castle. The princess is the faith that we want to take her out from everything that we have in life. You want to believe that there is no people, that everything is Hashem Barach that your friends are Hashem Barach, if they're pushing you, they're stopping you, they're talking to you nonsense, you want to watch your ears. Someone told me that from the moment that he started to work on his Ta'avat Achila, every day there is meals and, 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 and feasts and bringing candies and, and... Why? Because he started working on something, now HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to pass the test. And first of all, you need to see your desires. To, to be aware to the enemy, to be aware to your to your body, what's going on with you. You, you have that Yetzirah, so first of all you need to know him. So you won't know him if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is just going to take it from you. You need to win, you need to have the privilege. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to help us, so to speak, to help us, and to take the Yetzirah from us, himself, he wouldn't create this world. He could, all of the souls, he could, could keep them in heaven, in the sea of souls, in heaven, and uh, and he didn't needed to send us here to this world. The only reason that he sent us here is that we're going to fight against this world, against materialism, and then we're going to find Hashem Barach inside this world. And then it's a Kiddush Hashem. Then this is 
when we, we reach the, the goal, the, the, the thing that we will look for. This is what he is saying, Rav Shalom is saying, Rav Benu explains, to find that lost princess, to find her, it means the faith. That where is she? Somewhere. Means everywhere. You need to look about all of the details to see Hashem Barach in there, to see the faith. You have Chas Shalom problems in Parnassah, it's Hashem Barach. Problems in Shalom Bayit, it's Hashem Barach. Problems with yourself, it's also Hashem Barach. What Hashem you want from, you want from me? What are you telling me? What are those hints? What is the Musar, Eskel? What should I learn from all those situations? This is how you find Hashem. You, first of all, believe that it's Him. Second rule, you understand that it's coming from a good reason. Third thing is to understand what is the lesson, what Hashem wants from me. Those are the three levels. First of all, recognize it's Hashem. Second thing, before you understand what's going on, you should count on Hashem that it's all good. He knows what he's doing. Third thing, observe what Hashem want, wants to tell me, to teach me. What is the message that is hidden inside of it? And then when you have those three, you're just climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. And you're not suffering at all. You're not falling. All of your, your life is going to be a hill, aliyah. You're climbing and climbing. Even if you're falling, you're climbing. It's not a fall. What? You learned the lesson? Wonderful. It's a progress. You learned the lesson. You won't do it anymore. Veharaya. This is the first thing. That it's all coming from a good reason. And the third thing is what Hashem wants from me. It's written in the book, Vegana Emuna, of Rav Shalom. All of those rules. Veharai, Garden of Faith. Veharai Yahi, and the, the proof is, Shehu halach leotzi ota, beenayim ptuchot. The proof for the fact that he wasn't ready yet to save her was that he went to take her out with his eyes open. Harav is saying, You're going to take out to save the princess, that she is the faith, and you're opening your eyes. And it's uh, bold letters. You see that, that it's a very strong thing because you should be aware to yourself. You know that when you open your eyes, you're sinning. means that you're chasing after your desires, after your lusts. So if you're going to do something for Hashem Barach, to save the lost princess, to bring her back to the, to the king, you're going after your eyes because you have desires. You're coming to make mitzvot, to do good things. You're doing it to enjoy those things, to, do, to, do the, to, to steal those pleasures that there is inside of those things to yourself, your messenger of the king is sending you to make mitzvot. So make the mitzvah. Be l'shem shamayim. Don't open your eyes. What are you looking for? In, in, in English, open, open your eyes is a good thing. It's just that, you know, emunah opens your eyes to uh -huh. other things. Opens your eyes to good things. I'm translating Hebrew. Yeah, no. It's say open better to say lift no, your eyes. A, a, what? Lift, lift your, your eyes. You lift can say your open your hearts and close your eyes. Lift your eyes. All right. Atah rotzei ligol et ha'emuna. Rav is saying, you want to save the the faith. Kasher atah ba'atzmecha. When you yourself ain't chad avuk ba'emuna, you don't have faith. You're not born to the faith yourself. You want to make mitzvot. You want to seek for faith. And you yourself, you're not only with Hashem, because I have explained it already. When a person is lifting his eyes, he is forgetting Hashem is Barach. When he's closing his eyes, he's with Hashem. Close your eyes, you're with Hashem. Open your eyes. There is options. There is people, there is camera, there is books, there is table, there is the clock, there is things. But if you're closing your eyes, there's nothing there. Only Hashem in Barach. Only Hashem in Barach. Lu ha'ita davuk ba'emuna. If really you were bond strongly to the faith, lo ha'ita poteach et enecha klal. You wouldn't lift your eyes at all. 
מה יש לך לראות? What are you looking for? ועל מה יש לך להסתכל? And what are you... What you want to reach? What you want to... To, 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 to look again? מאחר שאין עוד מלבדו, because you know that there is nothing except of Hashem יתברך. If there is nothing except of Hashem יתברך, so what are you looking at? You're looking at people, you're looking at nonsense, it's all Hashem. Why are you putting so much intention to everything, to every detail, like it's important? Actually, what is important? The will of Hashem. What Hashem wants from me now. You won't find it in the street, you won't find it in the supermarket, You're going to find it only when your eyes are closed, when you're with Hashem. And then you're asking Him what you want me to do. And then He's going to hint you, He's going to tell you. It's so, alright, you're asking how I'm going to buy things in the supermarket with my eyes closed. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. Because we need to understand the, the, the message. We need to understand the, the Musar scale. Arav is telling you, you're not allowed to go like a tourist, to wander after your eyes and to look for... for nonsense, for good things that you feel that they are good for you. So, what should you do? You should understand what is your goal, and go do that. If you, now you need to go to the supermarket, you're allowed to go to the supermarket. If now you look for something uh, uh, specifically, I don't know, some kind of, I don't know what, toilet paper, in the, you need to take a certain kind of toilet paper, so you're allowed to open your eyes, the minimum that you should, and to take the one that you need, and this is it. You don't have nothing else to do on those shelves anymore. To look for more options, to look of all and other names, or just to be like a drunk person that is just wandering and looking and he doesn't see nothing important. So, if you are after something, You're allowed to take your eyes, and like we learned, Vaisav Ram et Enav, Vaire, you're allowed to lift your eyes and to see what you need to take, and this is it. But you're not allowed to open your eyes like the windows to let the information uh, float inside, to come inside. Flood your brain. Exactly. You need just to do what you need to do. All right, now you have a mitzvah to drive. You're not allowed to close your eyes when you're driving. You need to open your eyes. But how are you going to do that? You're going to look at the road. Don't look at the stores. Don't look at other drivers. Don't see if you see someone familiar in the no. crossing lines. Pedestrians. Crosswalk. Cross lines. Crosswalk. Crosswalk. Yeah. Crosswalk. Don't, don't look. If you see people that you know, familiar with, look at the trees now, look at the birds now. You're not allowed. Drive, driving with your eyes closed no. is a full emuna. No, I said. No, you're <laughs> allowed. For no, we said. Seriously. You have to open your eyes. But look at the road. Look, and when you are in red light, look inside your car or close your eyes. Be with Hashem. Do Be. what do what you're doing. Do so what you're doing. You do don't start. So the, the Jewish people are the only people who actually practice this. Meaning whether it, you're, 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 you're davening, or whether you're making a bracha, or whether you're in Shabbos, where you're completely there, you're not thinking about something outside. Really, that's what we, that's our, kind of our job at all times, is to practice, to be completely in the present, as opposed to... The future of the past. Yeah. It's written that we have to, to, to make all of the days of the week holy in Kedushat Shabbat, like, like Shabbos, like Rav Shalom said, You're in the Bet Midrash, you need to close your phones, you need to not to think about your, about your troubles, and think that, uh, like in Shabbat, in Shabbat, you don't think about nothing. So you're now you sit, because you live now, that uh, there is Shab it's Shabbat now. So, the Tzadikim, they are in Shabbat, also in the days of the week. They feel Shabbat, they don't care about those things, they're with Hashem. If you're with Hashem, you don't have no problems. Hashem is helping you always, all of your needs, He's giving you. And if someone has confidence in Hashem Yitbarach, he's going to find all of the things that he needs. He needs to pay his schar uh, dira, to pay the, the, the rent. He's going to find the money. If he's counting on Hashem Yitbarach, he's going to find the money. Even if he never worked, worked one day in his life, if he has confidence in Hashem Yitbarach, in the moment that he's going to need to pay, he's going to find the money and he's going to pay it. Or that someone's going to tell him that it's already covered. 
הקדוש ברוך הוא going to take care of that, if you're counting on השם יתברך, הבוטח בהשם, חסד יסובבני, only grace you're going to see surround him, grace of השם יתברך, only. But if all of your time you're opening your eyes in השתדלות, and you're looking for things, and you think that you are the one that's supposed to take care of the, the rent and the bills and all the things that you need to take care of, so uh, the, it's a mistake, and you won't achieve it, and you're going to suffer. This is what it, it's written. Adam le'amal yulad, v'ashrem mish'amalo b'torah. Everyone needs to suffer, but it's better to suffer on watching your eyes than to suffer the results of, of lifting your eyes. It's horrible uh, results. What happens?